President Bakune was in Beijing, China to attend the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. She held bilateral talks with Chinese President Xi Jinping, and negotiations for a long-awaited free trade agreement were finally concluded. The two nations said they will remove tariffs on more than 90 percent of products over the next 20 years. China has a population of 1.3 billion people and is the world's second largest economic power with a huge domestic market. With this bilateral FTA, Korea has secured free trade deals with pretty much all of the world's major economies like the United States and Europe. In particular, it is predicted that the free trade agreement with China will have a greater economic effect than the FTAs with other nations. Presidential office correspondent Che Yusun brought us the news from Beijing, China. Underwater search operations for the nine people who remain unaccounted for in April's ferry disaster have come to an end 210 days after they started. Oceans and Fisheries Minister Yi Ju Young made the announcement and reporter Connie Kim covered this story. One of the reasons for ending search operations is that parts of the hull are collapsing and dropping water temperatures are making operations difficult and dangerous for divers. The Central Disaster Management Headquarters will go over the technical details and hold discussions with the victims' families and experts to review the options for raising the vessel. Reporter Shin Zemin brought to us a report on the fintech era starting in Korea, following in the footsteps of the United States, Europe, China, and others. Fintech is a newly coined word that combines the words financial and technique. It refers to mobile payments using the internet and telecommunications. Bank Wallet Kakao is an example of fintech. It was released by the mobile messaging service Tom Kakao. This service works with 16 commercial banks here in Korea, and users can easily wire money to friends through Kakao Talk, like they are sending a regular text message. The fintech business is growing at a fast rate all over the world, so the Financial Supervisory Service has opened up a fintech consultation center where aid is given for licensing, security evaluation, financial legal analysis, and other administrative services. Seniors who are, now do you hear this chanting? Now, so just how important is this scholastic uh, ability test? Well, so important that there are a number of superstitions that the students will follow to get that high score on the exam. Let's take a closer look. My broadcasting date for Korea Today was the 13th of November. And looking on the calendar, it was a day where um, Korean students or high school seniors uh, nationwide are taking the college entrance exam. When this exam day approaches um, here in Korea, you see a lot of uh, different things being sold at stores or at grocery stores or at um, bakeries. And the reason why is because there are certain superstitions that uh, students should follow um, in order to do well on these college entrance exams. And I was wondering what's the story behind these superstitions? Like where did these superstitions come about? Um, who thought of them, you know? And so I thought it'd be interesting to have a, my story angle just on these superstitions. It was November 11th, two days before the college entrance exam in Korea. Reporter Connie Lee visited Pongunsa Temple in Gangnam Gu Seoul. This time of the year, many parents who have children taking this important exam gather at temples, churches, and cathedrals to pray for their children. <laughs> We can sense the desperation from the parents as they pray for the success of their children in this year's college entrance exam. 
예불, 사시 예불, 저녁 예불 때다 읽어드려요. 추건해줘요. 그걸 우리 추건해준다고 하는데 추건해드리죠. 네. 선배, 지금 안에 들어가서 찍는 게 나을 거라고 지금, 네, 지금 기도하는 시간이라서 Connie goes to a different part of the temple to get some video footage of the parents. The prayer room is filled to the brim with parents. Despite harsh weather conditions, everyone prays and bows with hopes of their children doing their best. Connie is full of questions as it's an unfamiliar religious ceremony. Seeing the parents who pray with all their might makes Connie realize once again just how important the college entrance exam is here in Korea. I heard that during this time uh, that there are a lot of parents, especially mothers, who go to the temple uh, to um, ask for help from the higher being. And so I went to the Buddhist temple here in Seoul and um, I found that the number of attendees to the regular you know, daily services have nearly doubled this week just from the parents who were praying for their children uh, who were taking the college entrance exams. And so just being in that atmosphere, I, um, I really felt the anxiety that they were feeling. And I can't imagine just how much stress or pressure that their child must feel knowing that their parents are also um, this anxious. And so even through that experience, I was able to know um, just how important this college entrance test is. Next, Connie paid a visit to a restaurant in Songbukgu, Seoul. She's going there to cover something about seaweed soup for her story, as it is considered to be the number one food to avoid when taking important exams. Since seaweed is quite slippery, there is a superstition that exam takers could slip and fail their exams if they eat this seaweed dish. Business is slow after lunchtime, so Connie gets ready to do an interview with the restaurant owner. So one of the superstitions of um, doing well on an exam is to avoid eating uh, seaweed soup. And so looking through um, you know, different restaurants in the area where we can go film seaweed soup just for um, video purposes, um, I found out that um, there's this one restaurant that specializes in seaweed um, that actually closes on this test day. Um, and so I thought it'd be very uh, interesting and fun to go to this restaurant and talk to the owner and ask him why he actually closes business on this day. It's a day before the college entrance exam and Connie drops by a bakery and cafe in Gangnam Gu Seoul. This store sells diverse gift sets for the students who are taking this major exam. There are many different gift sets that center around forks so students can pick the correct answers and hand mirrors so they can see the exam questions well. Out of the many, the most popular ones are taffy, rice cakes, and chocolates. Taffy has been popular for a long time because they stick and you can stick to the colleges which you want to go to. 
근데 내가 사야 될것 같아. 왜냐면 내가 찹쌀 딱 이거 이렇게 안 해도 속도 보여주고 싶거든. Connie decides to purchase some rice cakes and taffy for her video footage. She's going to give a better explanation of the special characteristics of taffy and rice cakes, along with the hidden meaning in giving them as gifts to exam takers. Connie does her news coverage from various angles so that she can help foreign viewers and Koreans alike understand the story. Um, so the idea of this superstition of to eat uh, taffy and eat rice cakes is that uh, these items are sticky. And so basically if you eat these sticky items, you can uh, you know, stick to the college that you want to go to with your high scores or you know the study materials will stick to your brain when you take your test and so uh, for filming purposes I wanted to show um, especially our foreign viewers who aren't familiar with you know maybe Korea's Korean rice cakes uh, to show just how sticky they are and so um, I thought it was necessary that you know we kind of take a jab at the rice cakes and like pull it and twist it a little bit just to show how you know Elastic it is. Connie's at Kyungi University to meet Professor Kim Jung Baek. It's for an interview on the superstitions related to the college entrance exam. 이런 기복적인 행동은 어, 수능이 얼마나 중요한지를 이렇게 보여주는 거죠. 한국에는 우리나라는 워낙 자원이 없는 나라. 그다음에 6.25 전쟁 이후 폐허가 됐던 나라이기 때문에. 우리나라가 발전될 수 있는 것들은 사실상 모두 교육의 힘이라고 볼수 있고요. 그러다 보니까 자연스럽게 가장 중요한 고등교육의 일차 관문인 대학교 입학과 관련된 시험에서는 언제든지 이런 식의 기복적 행위가 많이 등장했던 것 같습니다. 네, 실질적으로는 한국 사람들이 진짜 이런 미신들을 믿는 거는 아니죠. 집단적인 효과도 있고요. 왜냐하면은 이런 어떤 한두 사람이 이거를 시작하다 보면은. 마치 내가 이러한 기복적 행위를 안 해서 우리 자녀 고등교육 기관 입학에 많이 실패한다면은 그거로 인한 어떤 책임 의식을 가지고 싶지 않기 때문에 실제로 효과가 있다기보다는 어떤 심리적인 안정감을 얻으려고 하는 그런 측면이 더 강하다고 볼수 있습니다. The interview ends, but Connie wants to hear more from the professor. 네, 네. 미국 같은 경우는 이런 게 적죠. 왜냐하면은 미국은 네. 우리나라보다 인구가 비록 일곱 배 정도 많긴 하지만 네. 그 일곱 배보다 훨씬 더 많은 교육 기관이 있고요. 네. 그런 게 있고 예를 들어 유럽 같은 경우는 거의 다 공교육화 돼 버렸기 때문에 네. 이런 식의 심한 게 별로 없는데 네. 우리나라와 일본이 굉장히 이게 좀 심하죠. 음. 상대적으로. 그 앞으로 바뀔 확률은 좀. 근데 기본적으로 수학 능력 시험 제도와 같은 국가 공인 제도는 앞으로 계속 유지될 전망입니다. 다만 음. 이것으로만 학생을 과거에는 선발했는데 이걸로만 선발하는 것이 아니라 점차 다양한 네. 학생들의 특성을 반영하는 그런 입시 제도가 우리나라에도 많이 지금 도입이 돼 있습니다. 음. The interview was helpful to Connie so she could rethink the Korean educational system. 음. Later, she went to Seoul High School located in Seocheogu. Connie wants to meet the seniors who are taking the exam this year and hear their stories. 혹시 고3 학생들인가요? 네. 질문 잠깐 네. 해도 되나요? 네. <웃음> 여기 인터뷰 하나 할게요. 그래서 내일이 수능인데 한국에 그 여러 미신들 있잖아요. 뭐 이거 먹지 말라, 이거 하라 그런 거 믿고 있나요? 많이 믿지는 않는데 뭐 같은 반 친구들 사이에서 그런 얘기를 하다 보면 살짝 믿음을 가기는 해요. 부트라고 여시나 아니면 찹쌀떡 정도 그런 거 받았어요. 네, 여기까지 하겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 혹시 고, 고3 학생들인가요? 네. 혹시 질문 잠깐 해도 되나요? 수능을 잘 보기 위해서 여러 미신들이 있는데 그런 거 혹시 믿는 편인가요? 네, 저는 그런 걸 믿는 편이라서 친구들도 약간 그런 머리도 안 감고 미역국도 안 먹을 그런 거 같아요. 네, 여기까지 하겠습니다. 네, 감사합니다. 수능 잘 봐요. 혹시 Connie's interviews with the students end well.
It seemed like they believed them half-heartedly, that they were just doing them um, just for the sake of doing them. And a lot of their friends were also um, avoiding certain foods or eating certain foods. And so as like a collective group, they were all doing it together. Um, it was interesting just to hear uh, their reactions and their responses to these superstitions. And it seemed like for the most part, the students would actually take part in these acts or you know, uh, do certain things or rituals. Um, to do well on these exams. The stand-up was done after the interview. Some props that are perfect for the report are used. As good luck charm, students either get a fork or a pair of tweezers. As good luck charm, as good luck charm, students either get a fork or a pair of tweezers. But the school has a different way. Oh yeah, okay. As good luck charm. Connie receives help from the camera assistant so she can do the stand up the way she wants. Pick or pluck out the correct test answers. Not your typical study habits, but the exam is deemed so important that the students will do whatever it takes for that high score, even taking part in some superstitions. The right Society changes at a fast pace, but reporter Connie Lee did her best to pluck out the things that have not changed regardless of how much time has passed. We hope everyone can see her consideration and care through the news package. When the students are actually taking the exam. I hope that they're not too stressed. Uh, you know, do the best that you can. And, you know, sometimes it's just better to just tune out the voices or tune out the, uh, um, the world when you do your studies and uh, prepare for this exam. And so um, I wish all the students the best of luck. Hanangde I'm very excited to be on this program because uh, to have this chance to speak honestly about the question of what education is and what it could be uh, is a very rare uh, chance for us and I'm very uh, interested in this dialogue not only to talk about what the problems in education but also about what the possibilities are. Private education not a really private lesson anymore. Private school and the public school. Private school is a private Public <laughs> Oh, 
All right, so are you going to talk about your own kids and financial crisis? <laughs> <laughs> May I ask you that question? Right. Absolutely. The, uh, pro the cost of the private tutoring program it seems very expensive here in Korea. So I'm con contemplating that the sending my kids to America public school. Oh, okay. Oh. So you're one of those. Okay. <laughs> no, All right. Nice. And uh, Professor Pestreich, uh, what about you? Are you willing to talk about your old? I'm or happy to talk about it. Okay. Uh, I have All two right. children. One of them is still in Korean school. Okay. The other one was yeah, in Korean know. school but had a lot of trouble. So actually, it's in a small international school now. Okay. Uh, so and I'm, if you. Um, stuck to the Korean way of educating them, do you think you will feel the financial pressure? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's, I, <laughs> that's enormous financial pressure. However, I'm not totally sure that going to America would solve the problem. It would just be a different set of problems. Yeah. All right, okay. And uh, Professor Lee, what oh, about you? I'm one of the Korean parents. So I'm not free from the financial pressure mm -hmm. of uh, spending for children's education. So fortunately, my kids are all grown up. Mm -hmm. so. You don't have to share everything, but just, uh, just to get the policy, have a good laugh about it, and then get to the real business, I guess. Hello and welcome to Upfront and Kangcheri. The actual position of diminished is phenomenal. Korean people, everybody is an educational expert. That's why I discuss today about the overall education issue, especially college entrance examination, educational pools on private education or financial pressure or parent spending for the children's education. It's really hard, no solutions. But there's lots of issues. So I learned a lot from other panels today that education in your future uh, is going to be not so simple. It will not be solved by one exam. Uh, and so it's a long haul. Uh, you have to be strategically very smart, uh, and your thinking has to be very broad, and you have to be ready to adapt to all sorts of different challenges. So that's a different skill set than taking exams. And you're going to need, uh, I think, to be honest, you're going to need that other skill set, the ability to adapt, uh, and to respond to new challenges uh, in the future.